The world is moving towards Kubernetes. Even if you aren't using it now, you will eventually. But here's the thing, Kubernetes is a complicated beast. Just making sure you have it configured correctly to deploy your app is a huge task by itself. No wonder why development with Kubernetes is a painfully slow process. And this problem only gets worse as the scale of our application grows. But what if I tell you that there is a way to make development in Kubernetes as if it was local? That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's quickly start by understanding what makes developing in Kubernetes such a nightmare. There are two major aspects that I want to point out. The first one isn't really a problem with Kubernetes itself. Wow, I'm off to a great start. The first problem is scale. In a large scale project, we are often presented with tens if not hundreds of microservices in a given system. Running all of them along with their dependencies on our local machine is practically impossible. Our local machines just don't have the resources required to run everything. This means that we need to rely on a shared development environment where we can expect all the services to be running all the time. We need to develop directly in the cloud. And I don't need to tell you how frustrating that can be. Every small change we need to try out would have to go through some stressful CI-CD process. That's just not fair. The only way out of this mess is mocking all the other services to make testing things locally a lot easier. But I'm going to reserve my comments on that one. Even if you aren't dealing with that scale, lucky you, developing locally with Kubernetes is still quite a task. Kubernetes can only run containers. So each change you make would result in you building a new Docker image and redeploying it to your local cluster with something like Helm. I know, Kubernetes can somehow make the simplest of tasks super complicated. That's its biggest value prop. Now, to be fair, there are some really interesting projects like Scaffold and DevSpace, which makes the experience considerably better. But it still isn't perfect. It still takes some time to deploy your app, and I still won't be able to use my day-to-day -day developer tools like a debugger. So what do we want? Ideally, I want to be able to develop locally just like I normally do without having to worry about containers or Kubernetes or any of that. I want to simply open up my IDE and a terminal and just fire away. Is that too much to ask? I don't think so. I deserve that much. I do. Luckily, there is a way we can achieve all of that with just one magical ingredient. The power of networking. Let me explain. Let's say I want to develop locally like I normally do. Even if I mock all the other APIs, I would want to test my app against some actual microservices at some point. To achieve that, we need to make all the services present in our Kubernetes cluster somehow accessible to our local machine. This can be done. We just need to do two things. First, create a tunnel for our upstream request to reach the cluster. Think of this as a pipe of some sorts. Kubernetes makes this so much easier thanks to its port forwarding feature. The second thing we need is DNS resolution. In Kubernetes, we address other services using their domain names. You know, things like myapp.default.svc.cluster.local. But those domains technically don't exist on my laptop. So we need a mechanism to spin up our own DNS server, which can resolve these domains to some local proxy, which can use the tunnel we had established earlier. Whoa. Even I don't know what I just said. You know what? Let's just skip the theory and jump straight into some action. There's this amazing tool which can connect the services running on my laptop directly to my Kubernetes cluster. And I don't even have to worry about all that networking shit I just spoke about. In comes telepresence. Okay, that was unnecessary. To see telepresence in action, we'll spin up a Kubernetes cluster and spin up these services in it. Don't worry, I put a link to the GitHub repo containing all the steps in the description below. Our ingress service is going to be a doubler. It simply doubles the number it gets in its request. However, doubler can't really do any math. It's kind of like me. So it relies on an adder service to add the same number twice for it. I already have a Kubernetes cluster, so let's just go ahead and create all the required Kubernetes objects. Oh, and before I forget, I'm not doing anything fancy with these Kubernetes configuration either. It's just your standard deployment and service objects. Let's just open a Postman to see if everything works. It does. Just to remind you, currently this request is being processed by the services running in my cluster. No role of telepresence up till now. But now let's say I want to make some changes in the doubler service. 
I've already cloned its code base, so let's open up VS Code and make some changes. As you can see, the double endpoint calls the adder service and simply returns its result. It seems to accept the URL of the adder service via an environment variable. Pretty straightforward. Let's make some changes in this endpoint. I'm simply going to decrement the result received from the adder by one. I know it makes no sense, but it's three in the morning and give me a break. Let's run the server. For the adder URL, I'm just going to pass its Kubernetes address. I know it isn't going to work, but ideally this is exactly how I would want it to be. Let's start the server, go to Postman and fire the request again. Seems like there is absolutely no change in the response. I mean, why would there be? We just ran the doubler service locally. We did not really change anything in our cluster. So let's instead try to hit our local doubler service by changing the port. Ah, an error. That's expected. It's because our local doubler service cannot talk to the adder service inside the cluster. Telepresence can help us fix that. Let's head over to our terminal and download the telepresence binary. This one binary is literally all we need. Once we have the binary, we can run one single command to fix all of our problems. Telepresence connect. The only prerequisite we need to worry about here is having a valid Coop config file. Let's go back to Postman and try hitting our local doubler service again. It works now, just like that. So Telepresence just started a local proxy, added DNS resolution capability to resolve cluster domains and established a tunnel for us to talk to the adder service running inside the cluster. Okay, that was a mouthful. The best part is, it's not just the adder service that I need to talk to. All services inside my cluster are now available to me as if they were all running locally. I know, I could have just shown you all of this up front, but that would make this video just a minute long. Never gonna let that happen. But don't go yet. There's just one more thing I wanna show you guys. Currently, I'm the only person who can reach my local doubler service. And that makes sense. It's running locally. But what if I wanted to collaborate or run some end-to-end -end tests? I mean, how do I make my local service accessible to other services? Well, that is possible as well. Telepresence gives us yet another command. Telepresence intercept. All I need to do is pass my deployment name and the port at which it's running. That's about it. Now, if I head over to Postman and hit my cluster instead of my local service, I see that I'm getting the modified response. In fact, if any other service in my cluster tries to talk to the doubler service, they would actually speak to the version of doubler running locally. What we have essentially done is intercept all traffic coming to the doubler service in the cluster and direct them to the version running on my machine. All the heavy lifting is done transparently by telepresence. There's a lot more to telepresence than just that. Let me know in the comments if you want to know more about it. And if networking and microservice communication gets you all excited, I definitely recommend you check out this video to understand how you can make your microservices communicate. Until then, don't forget, I am your tech bot. You're on YouTube and hopefully in real life.